It's Two in the Aisle with me, Charles Krauss, and Leslie Hubbard Blake. Tonight, reviews of Jagged Little Pill, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, The Lightning Thief, A Christmas Carol, and Cyrano. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two in the Aisle. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Charlie. It's been so long. It has. But we've got five whole shows to review this, we uh, do. this week. And we're going to start with The Jagged Little Pill, the jagged little musical that has everybody's attention. This is based <laughs> on the uh, music of... Um, Alanis Morissette. Yes. And directed by, uh, I'm sorry, Diablo, by Diablo yep. Cody, directed by uh, Diane Paulus. And this, Paulus, yeah. and this, you know, this reminds me of a show, um, Love Letters. And in one scene, there's this wasp senator who's writing this Christmas letter to his constituents. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, mm -hmm. oh, we're, you know, Jim mm -hmm. Dandy, and it accidentally goes to a close friend of hers, who, of his, who uh, sees right through the BS mm -hmm. and rips into shreds. And at the beginning, we see uh, Elizabeth uh, Stanley as Mary Jane Haley writing a similar letter. I think the name's just, meant to be pronounced Healy because Healy, I think healing is part of the story, but go ahead. And, you know, you just kind of get the feeling right then and there that this perfect family from Connecticut is going to be in for a rough ride. It's an interesting family because the, the mother, we find out, is a drug addict. Right. The father is a porn addict. There's but a more, son. But that, that's a, more of a workaholic. Who watches porn while he's in the office. Mm -hmm. And the, the son is a, is a super super jock, perfect guy, so you know something's going to happen in, he there. He just got into Harvard. Right, and then the daughter who's adopted is black yes. and has issues about being raised in a white family that doesn't give her her blackness. So some of that stuff's going on there. Yeah, a little too much of that stuff. There, there, uh, you going, think, there, maybe? There, well, there are two real problems. With Only this two? Part. Okay. Number one. All right. I couldn't hear one word. Oh, I had no problem here. I could not hear, well, are you Which familiar, might have been a problem. With, with the music? No, I do not, I, except for the last song, I was, was going to say that, I have I, no I, and, knowledge And then I went music. online, listened, tried to listen to the soundtrack, <laughs> you know, there's a cast album, Didn't hear it there, couldn't make out any of the do, words Do you remember there? what one of your daughters Either. said about Frozen, Daddy, you're not a 12-year-old girl? Yes. Daddy, you're not an 18-year-old girl. Well, yes. I did not, I was, it, this was the 90s, it was so far out of my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. um, and I, I so... But, but it's, it, you, you could brought, have some identification with a matriarch solving drug problems. I mean, you've never been. You, you, you are a mother. <laughs> thank you. Know, you. Well, you, I mean, no. You, I mean, you've never been a drug addict. Uh, you, you know, addicted to pills. But, but I, you, I, you, I am on medication. So, right, there's so you, again. you would have some. You would have some idea. I mean, I, I was a young man once. I went to college, etc. I grew up in the suburbs. But here's the second problem with the okay. play. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Well, that's is, really the is problem. There a, is Mary Jane the central character? Yeah. Maybe. Or is it an ensemble? It tries to be both. So is it Mary Jane's story? Is it her husband? It's definitely not her husband's story. Well, all right, here's the, here's, is, is, it the, is it this classmate of theirs who all of a sudden gets raped and suddenly it becomes about her? Is it about the black daughter? And the play can't decide. Make up its mind. All right, but, here's, here, but the other thing is, this music has been forced into a story. This music, according to the young woman I brought with me, who was raised, who was who was of the right age in the nineties, mm -hmm. um, said it was one roar of female rage. She said there was never an album like this, and young women and older women bought this album. I just never even heard it, um, and that's the problem. What you have is all these songs about rage and anger, of a of a of a young girl, the father has to be able to sing the song, the mother has to be able to sing the song, the brother has to be able to sing the song, and so none of it fits. The songs don't fit comfortably into their mouths. The, 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 the problems are so obviously made up. You know, you take this well, nice, it's almost fiction. white Everything family in, in fiction Connecticut. Everything is made up. No, but, you, but I, thank you. All right, overly made up, let's put it that way. They're fake. I like that better. They're fake. They're fake news. Um, every, okay. They're real problems, but they're not the problems they that these false. people have. No, they feel fa false in this family. Okay. It's the one family being made to, you know, take take in mm -hmm. all of these things. Um, and so, 
It just, I, oh God. The only song I knew was the one at the end about live, about learn. Mm -hmm. you, you, you live, you learn. You, you, you fail, you right. learn. You, you break, you learn. That song I had heard before, mm -hmm. but nothing else. It was like one long oratio and I didn't even get the rage. I got the words, mm -hmm. but I didn't get the rage. They were all orchestrated out, I think. But Except for the you young like, girl who had been raged. Did you she, like, the, yeah, well, even, She had rage. She did, but you know, she does, she's not a very strong character and she makes, an impression, but th then, you know, I realized, well, you know, she's been raped, so that automatically puts a certain spotlight well, yeah, on her. All right, yeah. But really, since the musical is about to move on to something else, mm -hmm. and, and then it's, it, it goes away from her story. Well, the son, he, he, was, he was there at the time, and he didn't do anything. He well, was that's not, it, he did nothing. But, so, but, then, but then it's shifting to his, from her to him, and not in a good way. But, the, and the, you know, the story- The story just doesn't flow. It, it it goes into that 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 Supreme Court justice story as well. There's a there's a great, a strong touch of that if you, you know, mm -hmm. except that he was supposed to be an active member, and it's hard to believe that this young guy would only stand and watch. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just, I, uh, uh, but I did like Elizabeth Stanley in the main role. Yeah, she was as, fine as, as Mary ja as Mary Jane. Again, good de decent enough performances. Yeah, here, I could see it too. Uh, but not necessarily great characters. Lauren Patton. Plays uh, the the, the uh, there's a there's another daughter we forgot to mention who's a lesbian. Sorry. Well, actually, she comes out as bisexual in this story. No, it's the same daughter. No, there's a black daughter and a white daughter. No, no, the black daughter. Oh, it's the same daughter. Same sorry, daughter. Miss. That shows you how you know. Okay, very sorry about that. Her girlfriend oh, is yeah, played there's, by. Oh yeah, there's another plot line. Yeah, another plot line played by Lauren Patton. Note to self. Don't, oh, I'm sorry. We're and musical. she yeah right. So she she starts out as she's the girlfriend of, of of the daughter. Right. And then the daughter suddenly meets a guy, and she goes I, with the guy, oh, and then she I'm says, not. "I'm bisexual." Well, that actually again, and a lot of these plots might have been interesting right. uh, uh, if on they their had own. been developed on right, their own. Right. But they don't get developed. And the play, you see, you mentioned love letters. To me, this is this is this is ne near next to normal. Okay. Next to normal with, about the and family. We have to wrap well, it up? Yes, I know, but it's next to normal was also about a family who had all sorts of mental okay. issues. So how many playbills? Oh, do I have to? You do. Uh-huh. Um, 2.5. All right. I'm going to go more with 3.5 because I was enjoying myself. Mm, mm, all right, well. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. It's okay. I mean, even at, every now and then there was a number. But, you mm. were just a little too jagged on this one. Yes, I was. Speaking All of right. jagged, yes. we now go to one of my very favorite playwrights, Stephen Adley Gerges, who writes the most incredible stuff and won a Pulitzer Prize with his play between something and Riverside and um, has been writing with, with the Labyrinth Company. This is a Labyrinth Company play produced by The Atlantic. Uh, I'm, yeah, it was the, the Atlantic. And, um, and this is at the Linda Gross Theater. The Linda Gross Theater on 20th Street. No, really. And <laughs> we always say that. And a gigantic cast. I think it's 17 or 18 people. And yeah, a goat. Yeah, amazingly large for an and old Broadway play. And a goat. Yes, and a goat. And, and, but it's very much what Labyrinth always did was small everybody goat. had to have a part. You tried to give a part to everybody in the company. There are no small actors, only, only small, small goats. Parts. Yes. <laughs> and small goats. And goats, small goats. And several of these actors have been in many of his plays. Elizabeth Canavan was in Jesus Shop the Atrium. Liza Colon Zayas has been in three or and four of them. And this play takes place in, in a women's shelter uh, on what I, what I believe and, is the Upper West Side. Uh, it, it, that's, it looked like the Lower East Side to me, but Well, okay. it looked like, but apparently, but again, since there are four ways to Riverside Park, I have to assume yes, you're right. it is that it, that it okay. is uptown. Right. And right. you have an assortment of uh, females and one transgender whose presence there is challenged by several other women, one in particular by the name of Sarge, who is uh, an army veteran. That's Liza Colonzeus, always yes. doing a wonderful job. Uh, plus you have the people who work there, the woman who is heading the place up uh, and neglecting her own family in the, pr in the right. process. Who is Elizabeth Rodriguez, who has been with the Labyrinth all along and, and finally made some, some headway for herself in uh, Orange is the New Black. Now here, Interesting. You have a situation similar to Jagged Little Pill in that you have all these stories swirling around. These seem but real. Here, <laughs> well, they seem real, but also the playwright, uh, although the play is can be long, it's like I think two or three hours. Mm. Um, it, it's okay because it it manages to move it to an ensemble. There is no real focus character here. And he manages to skillfully shift the stories. Skillfully shift from, from so, into so, so that, many stories. So that we end Absolutely. gives us something to follow. And enough so that we get these characters, we see where they're coming from, and we can appreciate 
each individual story. And sad to say it doesn't tie it up in a, in a, in a bright blue ribbon well, because this is not a happy hard, story. Hardly expected. A lot of laughs because mm -hmm. he writes funny, but everybody rings true. Everybody has his or her own voice. Um, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of that, um, Esteban Andres Cruz as the tender, transge tender transgendered Venus, who also... Who I don't also, know if tender is quite the word to describe him, her. Both. both but, well, it is both, right. It, it, there's some tenderness there. Uh, I wanted to say, okay, uh, Patrice Johnson Chavanes. I, I did uh, remember Run Boy Run. You didn't get to see it, I don't think, down at the New York Theater Workshop. This young lady, or a uh, lady, however her age, uh, who reminds me very much of Cicely Tyson. Oh, okay. uh, in, in that same kind of being able to get inside a role. Right. Here plays a woman at the end of her tether in a wheelchair. Oh, okay. She had been a, 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 a minor celebrity right. and had even had dinner with Noam Chomsky, which is, I mean, who would stand, st would Stephen Adley Gerkes would throw Noam Chomsky in the middle of this whole thing. Indeed. Um, and there's a baby and there's a, uh, as I say, and a goat. Yes, a goat. Um, uh, it's just so many stories goat intertwined. Goat doesn't fare well. The th problem is, of course, that this is about one of the biggest problems in New York, and that is these people are all homeless. They're, they're not just abused, they're homeless. If they leave this place, they have no place to go. Uh, and, and a husband comes in and tries actually, to get actually in. Actually, they do, uh, because we see it at the end. Well, but some, they are saying, yes, they're there, just there's sent an, an abusive one of these husband places. And, and how he's handling and a, and a, a priest who yes. Yes. Has, wonderful has ensemble work. Him. Wonderful ensemble work. And, and, just, and, and, even, and even the priest and the employees have their backstories, right, and right. some of them aren't pretty. No, and 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 yet and 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 they're, they're obviously dramatic, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe these people, and I never believed anybody in Jagged Little Pill. So I think that's you know it's not even how many stories, but did you believe them? I never believed those stories. I didn't care. I wasn't taken with them. I, think I cared about I think these that, places. I think that's the difference. Well, Caring. You know, believing is well. I had empathy for these people. I had no okay. empathy for the others. Even so, though you're probably you're probably closer to a Connecticut oh, much closer family to those than people. to a, yes, jagged little bill West, people yeah. than, than these. Yes, yeah. okay. but that's, well, that's just the, the, that's, the luck of the draw. Good, you know, play, good playwriting. So um, I would give it four point seven five. Uh, I will go as far as four. What? For you, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Okay. The Lightning Thief. Yes. Now, this is um, the Percy Jackson musical. Um, I think it says something when I wanted to invite my niece to see this. Mm -hmm. And she's a big Percy Jackson fan. Mm -hmm. and, and her age is? Uh, she's 18. Okay. Or she will. No, she's 17, and she just got accepted into Barnard's. Wow. Good well, for you, Rebecca. Yes. Um, Be careful. And Rebecca. my sister said, well, she doesn't want to go. She saw it off Broadway, and she wasn't very impressed. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, I actually had was unfamiliar with Percy Jackson until I saw it off Broadway. I subsequently read the first book. I actually would like to read the others, and I did enjoy it off Broadway, and I also enjoyed it on Broadway. Mm -hmm. So this is a very nice representation of the Lightning Thief. Um, if you're a Percy Jackson fan, I think you will enjoy it. If you're not a Percy Jackson fan, you probably won't bother to come, but I think it stands up very nicely on its own. I, again, I was unfamiliar when I first saw it with it. I saw it here, and I I, I liked it. It's um, you've got uh, some nice characters, well portrayed. You have Percy, who's a demigod. He is the son of the god, Pos the Greek god Poseidon, and he has a the human demigods. Mother. The demigods are the children of the gods who right. who had who had sex with normal with with human with women, people. human and women, or or sometimes where, where they where they can go to get away is this camp half blood. Uh, which is, I guess, kind of like a Hogwarts in, in a way, but really where they can just be with other children like, like themselves. And Percy is sent on a quest to find a stolen lightning bolt and inquires many of the other gods and uncovers a big plot. It, it does share a certain feeling with Harry Potter. Not, not quite as good, but we saw this on Broadway. We saw this on Broadway, and we raved about it. And, and I had never seen Percy Jackson. I, I went home and I, I actually DVR'd, I found the, the movie on some channel, and I watched the movie, which was, you know, it was that kind of movie. All right, that wasn't made for me. But the play was charming. Yeah, you no, exactly, thank you. Uh, nope, never minded it at all, either. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we, we thought it, it had a kind of a, let's put on the show right here quality. It was, it was, 
when you move that to Broadway, they moved it. Something happened. I don't know if it was too small for the theater. I don't know. If, something happened. The light went out. I, it didn't. It was the same characters. I think mostly the same mostly actors. Mostly the same cast. Um, I just didn't get the same feeling, and and I liked it before, and I don't like it now, and I don't get it. Mm -hmm. uh, I. I I just think the move was a wrong idea. I think it was an off-Broadway show that should have been kept off-Broadway. Um, it had a kind of a, an Etsy made by hand feeling that um, arts and crafts. That it's it's hard to do on, that something like that is hard to recreate. Well, you know, uh, Be Chill did something similar, but Be Chill gave it Broadway effects and it never felt too small for the stage. Right. This just feels too small. I think Little small. Shop had that pro a similar problem when it was on Broadway. Just Possibly. Because well, we were lukewarm to the Broadway production, right. and we both loved the recent. Yeah, but Broadway. also it had to do with direction, and here everything okay. was the same. Yeah. So the the idea that everything is the same, I I just don't get it. And um, I, well, you know, I and I, I brought I know a, a, a lot of people. Old I know me. a lot she of people was, have had that problem. Yeah. I did not. I I enjoy I enjoyed it the second okay. time around. All right. And, so and, what would you and give I'll, it? I guess three and three quarter. I think. <sighs> I'm going to give it two point five. I don't know why they moved it. I really okay. and truly don't. I don't, and I did not want to go to see this next play. Okay. It is a Christmas Carol for the 9,825th <laughs> time, a Christmas Carol. No, no, don't make me go. Oh, well, wait a minute now. It's written by Jack Thorne, who wrote Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Oh, well, it stars Campbell Scott, and Andrea, Andrea Martin, Martin, and LaShawns. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? I'll go. Okay. Because that's our job, and we're supposed to do it anyway, that's right? That's right. So I went, and boy, was I thrilled that I, that I did. I'm so happy I went, because... And I brought the same little girl that I bring to everything that's like that. I brought the same one I brought to Lightning Thief, um, um, Amaya, hello Amaya, um, to see it. And of course she knows a Christmas Carol. She knows many cartoon and regular versions of a Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. This is the real deal. This is the original story. I mean, it may have been, the, the script may have been written to, to be smoother, but it's the story, it's Bob Cratchit, it's the three, the, th it, it has the three a, ghosts. Th the three ghosts. It has a theme. It has the miser. It has the miser. Yeah, you stopped me there for a second. It has the miser. Uh, it, it, who, does it, who was Andrea Martin? Andrea Martin was one of the, one of the, she was Christmas past. And the songs was Christmas future. And I don't, I'm going to look to see Christmas present. Um, no, the songs was Christmas present. I'm sorry, I don't know about future. I, there is a future, but I don't see it. It doesn't matter. Um, Only if you Ebenezer Scrooge was Campbell Scott, mm -hmm. whose father, George C. Scott, played this in a, in a there very was a memorable very nice, movie. Nice movie of it. Now, what is wonderful about this is it's the story. We know what the story is. It uses theatrical effects. There are no projections. There are no sirens. There are no bells and whistles. What you have is anything that you could do in a theater on a regular theater budget, not, mm -hmm. you know, bells and whistles and whatnot. And as such, you suddenly become that child who's seeing a play for the first time, and you go, "Oh!" When the when the sides of the of the building just go into the floor, and then they come up again, and you go, "Oh!" Now that's a simple but they theatrical don't block the trick. View. They don't block the view, and it's a simple theatrical trick. Mm -hmm. They they have something in the balcony so that when they're ready to set the Christmas table, all the food comes down on a on a on a string. You see platters come by you, and they say, would you help us, please? Because they're singing Christmas carols. Oh, by the way, they've added Christmas carols to this Christmas carol. Um, and it's Jack Thorne who gets the credit for making the script speakable. Um, and it was just, just lovely. I was so pleased. Oh, one of our, an actor whose name we love, Dashiell Eves. You always like that name. You, you, we've seen him in a bunch of plays. So it, it, it was directed by Matthew Warchus, who is a, a great British director. It's simple, it's clean, it's theatrical, it, it's Christmas. It okay. was lovely. I, I have been unable to see this yet, but I, I, I do hope to see it. Okay. I do hope to see it. Well, something that I'm very glad I saw, mm -hmm. and this is Cyrano. And this is, of course, uh, Cyrano de Bergerac. Uh, this is a musical. It is actually not the first time Cyrano has been musicalized. There was a production that is... No one seems to remember that uh, starred Christopher Plummer like 50 years ago, mm -hmm. and I guess they decided it was time to try again. Uh, Erica Schmidt wrote the book and directed it. Uh, Aaron Desser and Dreis Dessner uh, did the music. Matt uh, Berner and uh, Karen Besser wrote the um, wrote the lyrics. Uh, Peter Dinklage is Cyrano. Um, 
And this, ha this is kind of, to me, this is Cyrano as written by Christian. Because... But Christian the character? Christian the oh, character. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you why. All because right. it has the romance. It has the passion. It has the fear. It has the action. What doesn't it have? Wit. And or wit. a nose. Well, or a nose. <laughs> but you know what? You know, Peter D I, can, I can live without the prop. Mm -hmm. You know, Peter Dinklage, who is, you know, short of statue, foregoes the nose. But here's what else he foregoes. You know, at the beginning of the, of the play, typically someone will say, oh, your nose is long. And then Cyrano will go into this whole creative river. Oh, that's the best you can do. Come on, I There's can... There's a scene at the theater that and that's supposed to happen, it's yes. And not there. No. And then later on, um, there is a Cyrano has to creatively stop one of Roxanne's suitors. And he comes up with all these ridiculous, how I got to the moon. Mm -hmm, you know, um, mm -hmm. One version I saw was called Sex Ways to Get to the Moon. And then in one amazing version uh, with Derek uh, Jacobi, while his cadets are being slaughtered on the battlefield, he comes up with an ode to it and just shouts it. None of that but, is there. And you think, well. But what is there? Let's talk about what it's is there. It's a musical. So let's, so clever lyrics. No. This score is, again, Christian must have done the lyrics because oh, they are so now bland I see what you're okay. and so. Okay. So what you're saying well, is it's too bland. Uh, what I'm saying is it lacks wit. It's not bland. The show is not it lacks bland, wit. Okay. but it lacks wit. And this is Cyrano. No, you have uh, you know uh, Peter Dinklage, who you know, again he's about four feet high. He doesn't bother with the nose, but he's got the nerve. He's got you know the passion, and he's got the swagger. Mm -hmm. to be Cyrano, and he sings mm -hmm. in this voice that's lower than you'd ever expect now, him to have. I went to a different production, and I think he had a terrible cold, which I'm just getting mm -hmm. over myself, because he his first line sounded like Leonard Cohen, and then after that it sounded like a, I don't know. He, he couldn't handle it, and mm -hmm. I felt so terrible for him, because if he if he had stayed in that, that unexpected Leonard Cohen mode, I would have been mm -hmm. thrilled. Well, that came and went on the night I saw it. Oh, maybe, maybe he wasn't sick. I thought he was sick the night I yeah. saw it. Jasmine Cephas Jones, whom we saw in Hamilton, yeah. is playing Roxanne, which yes. is a really interesting good, choice. Good job, uh, like oh. Jenner is Christian. And again, there is the excitement there. There is the romance, you know, Cyrano loves Roxanne, but he thinks, oh, I'll never get her, not with this nose. Mm -hmm. And so he basically, and, and, and Roxanne loves poetry. She loves to be seduced with words. And he's, and Christian, is not a very literate person, this, but he's handsome, this so they team up. This particular version counts on the mm. fact that we know the play. It jumps from here to here to here to here without really making the characters have to mean anything. So I don't get Jasmine and Christian, I'm sorry, Jasmine, Ro Roxanne and Christian falling in love at first sight. I don't see it. There, there's a moment, but there's no time for it. There's no discussion of it. There's no, it, it, it's helped along by Well, by remember, she Cyrano's, never really loved him. Well, yes, I know, but she did have that first sight coup de foudre, yeah. the thing that goes on. And and the thing is that, um, oh, no, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, you, you basically, you, you, you didn't, the chemistry. The chemistry, okay, all right, yeah, the chemistry was, wasn't there. And the getting from, de Guiche, de Guiche, the, the problem is. Who is Roxanne's other suitor and a very powerful. Yes, and a powerful, uh, powerful person. You really, I mean, you say, they say that they hate each other, but you don't really know why. I mean, oh, it's, I think you can figure it out. Yeah, you can figure it out, but I don't think that the script. I don't think the script does service to the. And of course, Miss Miss Schmidt is married to Mr. Dinklage, so you think she would have done more for him. She, it's a great part for him. Oh, he does. It's, he comes out fine. And I he have to fine. say that it's directed. Nose or no nose. Beautifully, so that he's his yes. his height differential is constantly being equalized by mm -hmm. people sitting or moving or. So, oh, and by the way, it's the busiest show I can remember seeing. There's bed, bread being baked. There's tables being set. There's all sorts of extraneous stuff mm -hmm. that takes away from what's going on. If it's that's happening on the left side of the stage, you really don't want to watch. What's on the right side? You want to watch the bread being baked and the flour being thrown. I think it's a little bit busy and unfocused. So all of the, and I'm sorry because I really wanted to see it. And I really wanted it to be good. And it's not bad. It looks nice. It has a very nice look to it. I think it is good, it. but, you know, we've seen so many good yeah. Cyrano's on Broadway. Um, yeah. There is a wonderful version with Clevin Klein that you can actually see the video. I haven't seen the video, but I saw it on Broadway. Yeah. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. If you want a more modern version, you can see Steve Martin in, yeah. in Roxanne. <laughs> in Roxanne. And uh, then there's the Jose... Uh, the Jose Ferrer, which, which is which the... I, I have never seen, but I would like to. Sine qua non. Get it? You, you, you must find it. I'm sure it's on Amazon. But it's you amazing. Can, but 
again, I, I do enjoy this Cyrano, and I, 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 I love Peter uh, Dinklage in mm -hmm. it. I will give it three and a half, maybe. Yeah, three and a half, mm -hmm. I think, it is worthy. Uh, but I will tell you, if you go, don't bring Roxanne. She won't enjoy it. <laughs> I will give it three and a half. Okay. So we have a little more time, and I would like to talk about the ghost of Christmas Carol's past. Okay. A couple of ones that you may actually be able to find, and some that I, I remember seeing on I bet on there's not anything you can't find, but go on, try. Well, Let's see what we're talking about. Patrick Stewart. It's a one, the one-man show. One-man yeah. show on Broadway. He read the book and yeah. did every character. Which is, which is the way um, Dickens did it himself. He would go and do that and make money doing right. that. So. And that is the first time I've ever seen Patrick ah. Stewart on stage, ah. and to me it remains the best I've ever seen him mm. on stage. There was a version that used to be on Madison, in Madison Square Garden. Yes. I think one year Ben Vereen was uh, Different was people in every year, yeah. Right. I thought that's what this was going to be. I thought that was that this one that we just saw was going right. to be a, a, a kind of a, a, I can't come up with a, there what, it is. What, I thought it was going to be a kind of a guess, uh, uh, what is that called, casting? Star casting kind well, of thing. Well, you have some very good stars in that yes, one. Yes, but no, but I mean this was an actual play in and of itself. It had nothing to do with that other production. Right. Right, and then if you can find it, there's actually a really good version with, of all people, Mr. Magoo, the cartoon. Oh, the cartoon. Jim, oh. That voiced by Jim Backus from Gilligan's yes, Island. Yes, I, I know who did it. I just well, okay. and and it's a musical. Oh. and uh, interesting. Uh, then of course there's also that 1935-36 one with Gene Lockhart playing uh, um, the Street? the Cratchit, Bob Cratchit, oh. um, and I don't remember the name of the oh. Sims, I want to say Sims playing playing Ebenezer Scrooge. I mean, there are so many different versions of it, and I think TCM probably plays all of them except maybe Mr. Magoo. <laughs> on, uh, and I think PBS may have played the P the Patrick Stewart one man show, the reading of of the uh, Christmas Carol. Right. I think you, I think Patrick Stewart also did a movie with other with other people uh, in it too. I think I think. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, you are right. You are right. You are right. I actually mm -hmm. saw the beginning of that one. Yes, you're right. There, right. there comes a point where you don't really want to see it anymore. You kind of get was, scrooged out. Yeah, I, but I was real. Well, you know, my son was in the musical Scrooge. Yeah, don't forget yeah. the musical movie Scrooge with um, Alan. I can't give his name. Anyway, you don't remember that one. No, it was written by the. There have been a lot of them. Yeah. Oh no, that was. You know, there's, a, there's a modern version with Bill Murray. That's true. That's true. On, okay. And there's one uh, with uh, all the Disney, uh, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and, mm -hmm. uh, and Scrooge McDuck making his animated uh, <laughs> debut. Was that his debut? That, w that was his debut as an animated character. He had been in comic books for many years. I didn't And that, know of course, that. led to the I, series I uh, DuckTales. Anyway, <laughs> so that is our show for this evening. <laughs> so when you go to the theater, look for Leslie and me, us too. On the aisle. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>